two world champions. They happen to be twin brothers. Well, the ingredients are there. Two guys who love to sit down to their punches and throw that firepower. I'm not scared of nobody, and I'm definitely not scared of someone who talks. There's no one in the division that can beat me. There's no one in the division that's strong as me. It would definitely deliver a statement. The power is for real. We would get a chance to let everyone in the world see the great things that me and my twin brother has done for the sport of boxing. Oh! Charlo just dropped Lubin! Being on the same car gives us energy. We, we want to be sharp. We want to be at our best. We're going to both meet in the middle of the ring, and we're going to let our hands go. Let the best men win. They are boxing. And they pound for pound. Over the weekend, there was a boxing main event. Erickson Lubin getting back to action, winning via unanimous decision. Now, it sets him up for the winner of the next weekend's uh, Jermel Charlo and then Jason Rosario fight. Okay, BC, did you see anything based on how he looked that gave you a feeling, no matter who it is, Charlo or Rosario, he's going to look good against them? Uh, I think it showed us that he can be competitive and probably will be against them. Obviously, the larger picture here, Luke, and the concern you have is, is Erickson Lubin's chin as strong as the rest of his game? Look, he's only 24 years old, and he's a southpaw Paul with big-time power, yet he showed you against a difficult out in Terrell Gaucher, who, if you make a mistake against... He'll make you pay that he can be poised and box in over 12 rounds for the whole. You got to be impressed at what Erickson Lubin showed you. But it's hard to overlook, of course, that 10th round when he did get clocked with a right hand and was wobbly. He recovered well. His legs were there. But when you mix that with the way we saw him get knocked out by one punch against Jamal Charlo in 2017 in his first title fight, Maybe it came a little bit too early in his run, whatever. He's won five in a row since then. I think it's not wrong to have a little bit of concern and say, does Lubin have the chin for this level? We can only find that out in the ring. He passed this test, and maybe it wasn't the most exciting fight because that's Gaucher's style. But I got nothing for respe respect, Luke, for the way that Lubin went in there and stayed poised, didn't overextend himself, led with his jab, went to the body, did all the things he needed to do, and, oh, by the way, hurt. Uh, Gaucher really bad in the 12th round and seemed to be on the verge of a stoppage. He's going to not be favored against either Rosario and Charlo and shouldn't be, but by locking up the WBC number one contendership here in the mandatory title shot, he's going to be in play to have a shot in that fight. And that's all you really need at this point, Luke. He's a growing fighter. A lot of those skills are coming on the fly. I love a lot of what I see, but don't overlook that warning sign though. Here's the deal. When he lost to Charlo the first time, what happened? He got knocked out, not quite cold, but something pretty close to it, in the first round. And not by some wild punch, not by some accident, a double jab, which was designed to make Lubin duck down and to his own left, and he got greeted with a right from Charlo, and it, it just absolutely stopped the show right there. Did you see something in this fight that told you it would go differently the next time? Okay, maybe he doesn't get stopped in the first, but the point is, the Charlo brothers both have pretty good chins insofar as we can tell. We certainly know they're athletic. We certainly know they hit hard. Jamal maybe more so than Jamel. Nevertheless, they still are power punchers. And they're quick and they're smart and they're gifted. You already got knocked out in the first round. You had to show something in this fight that can make us reimagine the second one. I can imagine that the limits of what happened last time could be stretched. I can't imagine that it'd be broken unless something really, really went differently. Now, you might be asking, well, what about Jason Rosario? Rosario, I don't think, is the boxer that Jermel Charlo is. At the same time, he is willing to take risks. He is kind of heavy-handed. He's getting older. He's getting more mature. When I say older, I don't mean old. I mean coming into his own as a young man. I think he's still in his early to mid-20s. He is, I think, Lubin, a better, probably a better boxer, but the kind of risks that Rosario might take, especially with inside fighting, even when he loses – are something that could give him a little bit of problem. So I might like Lubin a little bit better against Rosario, even though he had that nice win over J-Rock. But against Charlo, I got to tell you, I know he's the mandatory challenger, BC. I don't see exactly what would be different unless Charlo goes in there with pneumonia or something. And I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm just saying. Well, Luke, he's grown a I, lot I can't in see three it. years. I mean, huh? look, the Lubin that boxed on Saturday... 
didn't was not the same fighter against Charlo the first time. Obviously, we didn't see what that fight would have looked like, and you set up that right hand perfectly. It was kind of a freak shot, but perfect timing. The ploy worked to get him to move in, and he got caught. Uh, I think he is a much more mature, better fighter. Adding Kevin Cunningham as his trainer has been a key in that regard. And he's even told me last week, you know, he cleaned up some personal things in his life that obviously any, you know, pro fighter that becomes sort of a quasi-celebrity yes. in his early 20s okay. yes, might but go got, through. He, but... Okay, but BC, he got rocked late in this fight. The power of uh, uh, carried late into this fight. You mean to tell me Charlo doesn't have the exact same kind of power late or even are significantly more so early and the same kind of skills to match it Maybe, i need to tell you that three years it. ago Char uh lubin's chances against charlo i think would have come down to more of a puncher's chance in getting that into an action fight what lubin did show us against gaucher is that now he can box at world-class level and has a ch has at least an avenue and a potential, Luke, especially when you consider that Jermel Charlo, if there's any flaw, a great fighter, a quasi-pound-for-pound -pound guy, and by the way, if he beats Rosario, he's going to leap into that top 10 if he's not already in there in terms of best in the world. Sometimes Jermel doesn't throw enough punches, so there is that potential for him to get into a boxing match have that left hand, use that jab, which it's not always easy, Southpaw against Orthodox, to establish that jab. Lubin is consistently showing you that he can. I'm saying he has a much better chance now. If he gets into a firefight against either guy, he's probably going to get knocked out of there. I didn't like the way he looked off a of one punch there from Gaucher, but uh, I think he's grown a lot, and I think this was a step forward, all things considered. Now, the, the star of the show, if you ask me from Saturday's Showtime card, this guy from Philly, wow, Jerron Ennis, they call him Boots. Holy smokes, folks, 23 years of age. He Every time I see this guy box, he is, to me, BC, if you're an MMA fan, you should love Jerron Ennis. Here's why. He switches stances. He can fight Southpaw for long extended periods. He can fight Orthodox for long extended periods. He has brilliant combos, timing, slick movement, offensively, defensively, and he has the confidence of a 23-year-old who knows nothing but talent, will and winning right he is i mean you, we'll talk about comms out shamaya here in just a second where he just walks down gerald mearshart and drops him with a shot jerron ennis at least on the boxing side of things has that similar kind of piss and vinegar fu vibe and yet still in command still out going out there beating carlos abreu who had never been stopped before i don't think finally stopped him and did it with relative ease i mean here was the part pc that sort of got me when he wants to be slick and precise and stick and move, he can do that. And then sometimes in this fight, he just took risks to land big shots and still got away with it. He is incredible. He is next level. And the thing that got me when I looked at his record yesterday in preparation for today's show, he's been fighting in like the most random, uh, not cities exactly, but facilities and venues. And he's been fighting in Freemason, uh, you know, what, I don't know what you call them, shrines. He's been fighting in hardware stores. He's been fighting in all these places. I'm like, dude, this guy is due for a step up, not merely in competition, but in getting the word out about who he is. People need to pay attention. I think Philly has a future champion on their hand and not kind of like some you know, squeaky in champion, undisputed world title holder, probably across multiple uh, uh, sanctioning bodies. He appears to me to be the next big thing in boxing potentially. Yeah, first of all, how dare you disrespect the uh, Showbox franchise from Showtime, which, you know, if they got to put on a fight in a hardware store or a no, Masonic no, no, no. Hall or Sloan, uh, Iowa, they'll do that, Luke, okay? So I'll, he's come up the right way. He fought in Norfolk, Virginia in some of the most random places, not on Showbox. Uh, look, he is, uh, he's next level here. He's 26-0 with 24 KOs. It's, it's almost past time to see him make a big-time leap forward. And look, this was supposed to be a legitimate step up against a guy in Abreu who's gone the distance and fought some very, you know, legitimate contenders across this division throughout his career. And he walked through him like nothing. He's in the welterweight division, which we know is always overflowing with stars, whether they're long-faded names who still can draw or young guys on the way up or champions in the middle. Uh, I can't wait to see who he gets matched with because you mentioned... He both took chances in there and showed you his skill. He has such next-level skill, command, 
and really a confidence and poise in there, Luke, that he's able to create such highlight reel moments because there's so much sophisticated uh, movement to his setups there and his fainting and all the things he does that he can put fighters in such a uh, difficult position off balance and then come with the boom and absolutely destroy them. I cannot wait to see what happens when he does step up to that upper elite level. He's only getting better by the fight. I said it on Twitter. I meant it. It's, it's a destination television when Boots Ennis is there. And obviously under the PBC banner, there are no no shortage of fun matchups you can make in the 147 division. Uh, yeah, he, he leaped through the screen. He won Saturday night, Luke. Brian, you ever been to the PA, the Pennsylvania Sheet Metal Workers Hall? Because Jerron Ennis has. <laughs> I think I he worked fought... there, by the way, uh, in 2005. Yeah, yeah. He, he fought at the Masonic Temple in Norfolk, Virginia twice, and he fought at the uh, Howard Theater in 2017 here in D.C. I didn't even know they were putting on fights at the Howard Theater. Okay. Is that where John back... Wilkes Booth shot, shot your president, Luke? That's a little bit more downtown. 